Hi, Mitchell Yao, Torque Trends Incorporated. Today we want to share a short video on the gear train and the power flow in our torque box. All right, this is the torque box. This particular torque box is for an EV. It's a two to one reduction. Our unit is based on a compound planetary gear set and uh, really, really simple unit. We'll go through the component pieces and then we'll discuss the power flow through the unit. This is the carrier housing, the housing that you see right here. It holds the planetary gear system uh, supported uh, actually in the tail housing with a double uh, deep groove uh, ball bearing that sits here on the output shaft. On the other end is the coupler and input shaft combination. The input shaft is splined into our coupler. Input shaft is 300M steel with rolled splines and it's splined into our coupler. See there was a little difficulty pulling those apart. That's because there's an O-ring that seals on the machine part of the input shaft. A coupler that's retained in a groove inside the coupler uh, backed by a snap ring. So it's a, about a 20 thousandths compression fit when you push those two together, that's to prevent spline leakage from the unit uh, fluid leaking through the splines down out the coupler and create an external leak. Uh, that is a Viton seal we use there. Okay, on the coupler we have retained with a spiral lock ring a uh, steel roller bearing. Uh, the housing is steel. The balls themselves are ceramic for our EV units. They're steel in our uh, non-EV units. But because of the high uh, RPM, the high speed on the input side, on the EVs, 12, 13,000 RPM, some of them, we use a ceramic ball for that uh, ultra high speed. So on the coupler side, then, we're splined to whatever motor shaft <coughs> or transmission output shaft that we're trying to fit. Same basic unit with different ratios, different adapters. Uh, you could find in off-road race vehicles, in lifted big tire trucks, or in EV, conversion, EV converted vehicles. So this particular one being for an EV is a two to one ratio. Inside the carrier housing is a fixed sun gear. That uh, central gear, the sun gear, is uh, splined into a flange, and that flange is pinned and bolted. There's three pins, alignment pins for proper alignment. This sun gear has to be dead center in this housing. So it's on alignment pins, and then six bolts retain it. They are Loctited in place. It's a 9310 material on that gear, uh, rim polished, and then a special uh, treatment, special coating to give it some real endurance. In that carrier housing, we have a drain plug on the bottom. You also see alignment pins here to align the housings, keeping everything uh, properly centered, properly engaged. On the uh, other end, you see a large O-ring here. This is also uh, Viton uh, material. And it's good for about 400 degrees temperature. Not that we ever see that, but uh, it's uh, just about the best seal you can buy. Uh, and you notice that the way that we're sealing our unit with this O-ring with about a 20 thousandths compression fit uh, is in the inner diameter of the next housing we're sealing into it. So we're not using a gasket or an O-ring on the mating surfaces of our housings. There's four different housings here. You have a tail housing, a carrier housing, an input housing, and then whatever adapter. So we're using these uh, 
Viton O-rings to do our, our sealing and they do a perfect job. Okay, the planetary gear set itself, I'll talk a little bit about that. It's a billet housing, 9310 gears. There are three tall pinion gears and three short pinion gears. And then all the way in the back in the center is the reaction sun gear. Now note that on this particular planetary system, the output shaft and its flange, or what they call a nail, that's one, one forging, is bolted to the carrier. And that's really important if you were to damage a carrier or damage an output shaft, you can simply unbolt it and replace the damaged part. Most planetary gear systems on the market, the carrier housing, the output shaft, this would be a welded connection, not bolted. So this is where we're running the uh, double deep groove uh, steel ball bearing to support the planetary gear set in the housings. And then we use a bolt-on yoke, it's a custom uh, steel nut, it's a grade, grade 8 steel nut, nut that gives us uh, great thread contact and uh, this gets torqued to about 150 foot-pounds. We don't want any in play in this unit, so as we assemble, or when we assemble this, we're using shims. Uh, we start with a large spacer uh, against the planet set, and then from there uh, we use shims to get the proper spacing, properly place the bearing in the housing, and, uh, and then bolt everything down. We don't want to overly uh, load this bearing. We basically want zero in play, uh, a thousandths is fine, uh, it's going to go away with a little bit of heat expansion. But we don't want to, when we torque this nut down, we don't want to be putting a lot of um, end loading on this bearing. We just want to take out the end play. So that's a very simple uh, procedure for measuring that. Uh, you can simply, with, uh, without shims, you can put your bearing on, put your yoke on, torque your nut down, and then there'll be a space or a gap between your bearing and your yoke. You can measure that. And with the, with the actual shim and stack the shims that you need to fill that gap, or uh, you can use feeler gauges. So pretty, pretty uh, simple unit, very heavy duty. And now let's talk about the power flow through the unit. Once more, we're splined on this end of the coupler to the electric motor in an EV or to the output shaft of the transmission. Uh, in a uh, gas-powered or diesel-powered vehicle. So the power flow in our unit is from the coupler to the splined input shaft. Other end of the input shaft is splined into the reaction sun gear in the center bottom of the planetary gear set. That sun gear is in constant mesh with the three long pinion gears those long pinion gears are in constant mesh with the short pinion gears. The short pinion gears are in constant mesh with the fixed, the stationary sun gear. And since it is fixed, it does not turn. They revolve, they walk around the fixed sun gear. So the power flow then is from those short planetary gears or pinion gears to their pins, their individual pins, again there's three of those, and from the pins to the carrier housing. And we've already seen that the carrier housing is integral with the output shaft because they're bolted together, pinned and bolted together. So again, out power flow, coupler to input, input to reaction sun gear, to the long pinions, to the short pinions, to their pins, to the carrier housing, to the output shaft and out. That's the power flow through the unit. There is no shift. It's not a two-speed. It has no neutral. 
it's a reduction gearbox. So whatever you've got coming into it, it's going to be reduced by the ratio of the gear set that we choose, gear set that you choose. And we've got gear sets from a 158 to 1 up to a 2 to, two to 1 and uh, several ratios in between. And we're currently working on um, even deeper reduction for some of the RVs from the track cars like autocross, and things like that. So that's the component pieces of the drivetrain and the power flow. Thanks for watching.